people that are interested in macroeconomics um, find it interesting to think about how, how local or individual decisions aggregate up and matter for things at the economy level, at a broader, more general level. Um, and in some sense, international macroeconomics is just the, the extension of, of that interest, but for the world. So, um, you know, you might not be interested only in what happens in one particular country, but rather how decisions in one country aggregate up globally and affect activity in another country. And 10, 20 years ago, particularly for a country like the United States, which is a relatively closed economy, this might not have been so critical. But increasingly, uh, you know, with globalization, we're doing much more trade across international borders, much more investment across international borders. And as a result, I think uh, understanding how countries are interlinked um, is really important. We push the field to, to understand and better identify, in fact, what is causing the labor share decline. You could imagine a world in which you know, we prevent uh, very bad policies from happening that would otherwise be aimed at, at undoing or, or nullifying or in some sense reversing the labor share decline. I think what our work highlights is that depending on what the cause of the labor share decline is, it might be something particularly positive, it might not be something particularly positive. We really don't know, and I think it takes a serious, rigorous research framework um, you know, to be able to get beyond what I think is a lot of people's sort of um, gut instincts that you know, a decline in the labor share is necessarily a bad thing. Um, our, our newest framework is designed to, to better understand, in fact, you know, what are all the moving pieces that's causing labor share to decline. Um, and in fact, you know, is it something that government or policy should be deliberately trying to undo in some sense or reverse? Or is it a healthy outcome in response to technological progress? I, I, I try and use my research in two ways in my teaching. Um, first, obviously you present, you know, sort of standard um, frameworks that are taken as sort of consensus way to view issues in international macroeconomics. Um, but I also like to present to the students um, to highlight the areas where there's a lot of remaining uncertainty and where active research is, is being conducted. And so, you know, one of the ways in which I bring my research into the classroom is if I'm teaching around those areas, I can say, well, here's one area where we have some uncertainty and here's the kind of things that, that I'm doing, that my colleagues are doing to try and clarify. Um, most lectures I have, or some lectures I have, have uh, a set of slides that are labeled the cutting edge. And the, the goal is to sort of generate excitement and give some ideas to what the research frontier is. And I think that is something unique to, to the Booth School. I think uh, the emphasis on research and the use of research in teaching MBAs shows up, at least in that form, in my class a lot. My research is an example of how to problem solve around issues in international macroeconomics when there's no clean, obvious data set or, or answers available. So early on in my research, I really wanted to figure out the international exchange rate exposures from particular firms. Um, and this is the kind of question that investors and business people would, would frequently want to try and answer themselves. And so I basically did kind of a brainstorming with the class, told them the kinds of things that I was doing in my own work to try and identify that and, and got feedback from them. And, and, and that would be another example of how I've incorporated my own work in class.